Fine, recording has started. Yeah. So it is booting up. Once the booting process is done, you'll get some login screen. Actually, this is virtual mission, right? There is a reason it is taking time. Basically, whenever you are installing the operating system in a server environment, you uh, your operating system boot up will take very less time. Okay. Um, okay. Here we have Pomshi user, right? Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm not going to log in with Pomshi user. Rather than what I will do is I will just click on not listed. We have an option not listed. Just click on that. Here, I am going to provide the username root. Yesterday, we didn't create the user. Automatically, yes. the root user has been created. And just yes. here, giving the root username and just click on next. Here, we need to give the password. Okay, yesterday, I have created Red Hat as the password in my environment. Yes. Just click on sign in. So, uh, it will show you the next. Uh, you to log in and it will show you some of the okay, startup screens. Again, it will take time. Depend upon your okay uh, specifications of your server or virtual machine. See this environment we are using only for practicing purpose. In real time, you will be having high-end models. Okay. Homework station. So you will get this startup screen. Just click on next, next, next. Just skip it. Just. Click on start using Red Hat Enterprise Linux. That's it, right? Okay. Here you can't see anything. Okay, this one, this help also you can close. You can't see anything. If you click on activities, you can see different icons. Like uh, if you want to use Firefox, you can click on this. So you, this files icon is nothing but it will show you, uh, you know, all the documents, the all, I mean, downloads, these folders, all the home directory of the user. So you see here, like Windows only, we will be having, okay, documents, downloads, music, 
videos trash your trash is nothing but recycle bin like windows mm. okay whatever you are deleting those will be actually going to the trash if you want to permanently delete you have to delete here this option you have only in the graphical user mode this is called as graphical user mode yes. there are two modes in linux one is graphical user mode or you can say graphical user interface gui and the second one is command line interface that is called as cli C okay so no one in the industries will use the graphical user enrollment just to understand okay how the graphical enrollment will looks and okay most of the people will write examination it's not most of them 100% of the people will write the examination in the graphical enrollment that is the reason i have shown you this particular thing but uh, from now i am not going to show you how to install graphical user enroll enrollment rather than i am going to show you how to install okay command line interface because that is the very important thing which you need to understand for okay real time okay i mean uh, whenever you are working as a real time experts you need to understand this thing right now we don't have anything here to do okay only you need to understand how to install that but i want to show you how we can use our terminal inside your okay graphical user mode you have to click on activities right now we don't have anything right if we click on activities here we have the last option you can see terminal click on the terminal it will open the terminal okay yesterday i already told you about terminal we already discussed about the terminal what is the use of terminal terminal is the place where you will type the human readable commands and you will get the outputs so yesterday in our example when we are discussing about architecture of linux i have explained you about the command mkdar so in my case i am going to create a folder called test if i click on enter now the folder has been created to check the output we have to type ll ll command is used for long list okay to show you all the files and folders inside the present working directory can you see the test directory which is created just now we have created you can see 1304 this time okay don't worry about the time this is a wrong time we can correct it i will also explain you how we can correct the time so right now you need to understand okay we have created the test but what about the back end process did we create i mean uh, did we uh, know what is the back end process no see the architecture like how the shell is converting uh, uh, from yeah the shell is converting this human readable command to binary form we don't know that that is a back end process and how it is giving the output to the okay input i mean the output of the you know binary how this shell is giving to the kernel as a input and how kernel is interacting with the hardware we can't see anything even the output how the output is coming from the hardware to the kernel how the kernel is passing the output to the shell how the shell again converting the binary output to you know a uh, human readable output these all things are back end processes we can't see them is it clear yeah whenever yeah. i am telling about architecture most of them are back end processes and how it will work that's it okay but practically it, is, it will be very easy okay if you know how that will work the practical thing is very easy okay mm -hmm. yes. so we are going to discuss the next topic the next topic is nothing but so hierarchy or okay you can say file system hierarchy file system hierarchy got it yes for explaining about file system hierarchy what i am going to do is i am going to open paint so in linux okay in every operating system you will be having file system hierarchy in uh, in linux the file system hierarchy will start with slash 
in Windows, the file system hierarchy will start with you can say C direct M C drive. Okay, then after you can create D drive. That is totally up to you. But you need at least one drive to install the operating system, right? In Windows. Mm -hmm. yes. So uh, let me show you that. So in my scenario, I have only one drive, which contains 930 GB okay, hard disk, right? Yeah. So in Windows, so if you start this C drive, OK? And coming to in Linux, the file system hierarchy always start with the slash. Sorry. Always the file system hierarchy will start with slash, OK? This directory we can call it a slash directory or you can say top level directory or you can say you know uh, we can say it as a root directory okay we can say top level directory or root directory most of the people will say root directory okay so what the slash contains or the slash contains slash contains all the operating system level files slash contains the all operating system level files slash directory contains all operating system level files is it clear hello yes yes I'm what is slash clear. what the slash directory contains operating system files Content yeah, all, all the operating system files. Mm -hmm. So this is called as a top level directory, or you can say it is a root directory. So simply a root directory contains all the operating system files, or slash directory contains all the operating system files. Our top level directory contains all the operating system files, whatever you want. But mm -hmm. most of the people will say root directory. Okay. Or you can say slash, but most of the people will say root directory. Again, I'm telling you, don't get confused because you will be learning one more thing, which you will get definitely confused about that. That is the reason I am talking about this two to three times. The next one is called as slash root. The next one is called as slash root. Root is different. Root directory is different. Slash root is different. You need to understand this. Slash root slash root is the default home directory for the root user slash root is the default home directory for the root user so we have logged in as a root user right so mm -hmm. whenever i have logged in as a root user you can see okay all of my all of my desktop documents downloads music pictures public okay templates uh, videos all these things okay are in the root directory how you can say that is in root directory if you type pwd you should see slash root slash root can you see the slash root yes so what do you mean by that this is the okay this is the parent directory for all these directories are you getting yes. this slash root is the parent directory for all these directories or all these parties whatever it is so you need to understand whenever you are logging as a root user by default for the root user the home directory will be slash root this slash root contains is desktop documents downloads music switches remaining okay extra okay things is it clear yes again yes. don't get confused slash root is different root is different okay mm -hmm. Let's do this. File is directory for all the files. Is it clear? Yes. yes. Can we discuss the next thing? Yeah. Yes. This uh, slash root uh, is a um, default default one. That is a default, default home directory, directory for the root user. Default home directory. Home directory is nothing but which contains all files and folders which required for the user, like documents, downloads, 
okay videos music like simply if anyone asks you what the slash root contains you have to say slash root is the default home directory for the root user which contains desktop okay is desktop documents and videos you know downloads everything will be included in that okay got it yes so the next thing the next thing is slash home this is very interesting directory slash home slash home is the default home directory for the normal users yesterday i told you this root user is the administrator but okay normal users are nothing but okay let's say omc user i have created yesterday you can say that is a normal user okay if i create any other users those are called as normal users apart from root user are you getting yes. okay so slash home contains the normal users home directories so i will show you graphically but okay again just i will use some command cd is nothing but change directory right present i am in slash root directory i have to use cd space slash home home slash home now if you press enter now if you type pwd you are in slash home directory right okay. If you type ll command, can you see automatically a folder has been created with the omc user? Okay, that means uh, automatically a folder has been created with the name omc. Why it has created this folder? You know, whenever you are creating a user with the user name only, it will create the folder. Inside that folder, you will be having all the files and folders which are required for that user. So, what do you mean by that? Okay, I'll show you what I what I mean by that. Right now, I'm in the root user, right? I'm going to log out from the root user. Just click here. And we have an option. Just click on this switch. And we do have an option. Oh, this is power off. No, I don't want to power off. And there will be an option of uh, log out. OK, here, click on root. And click on log out. I am going to log out from there root user and i am going to log in as a omc user now i am just clicking on omc and providing the password it will take some time okay, okay. the password password would be the same as you provided for the root or uh, uh, it's a different slash to different it's different So now we have logged in as the Wamshi user. Now go to activities, go to terminal.
Hello? Yes, yes. Yes. So you, if you type here PWD, present working directory. Okay. Now tell me what is the home directory here? Home sheet. Slash home, slash home sheet. Slash home sheet. Okay, because home sheet is a normal user. And all the normal users of okay, home directory will uh, create under the slash. Right now, I have logged in as the OMC user. That is the reason, OK, it's showing slash home slash OMC. If I create one more user, if I create one more user, OK, if I log in with that user, then what will happen? It will show you slash home slash, home, slash, slash user name. name. So let's say if I create Yogender, OK, Slash home slash yoga and there it will show you. Okay. So if I create, you know, uh, Ashwin, okay, it will show slash home slash Ashwin. So likewise, okay, for all the normal users, the home directories will be created under the slash home. Okay. Whenever you are logging in to that particular user, automatically yeah. your home directory will be slash home, that username. I have logged in as a OMC user. That is the reason. It, the home directory for OMC user will be slash home slash OMC, right? Mm -hmm. If I type LL here, it will show you all the desktop documents, downloads, music, etc. Et okay. Other folders. Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So the next one is slash yesbin. Yesbin is nothing but system binary. Yesbin is nothing but system binary. Okay, this yesbin contains all the commands, okay, which can be executed by the root user. Only root user can execute these commands, which are stored in the yesbin. Let me show you that. If I type cd space slash yesbin, if I type ll, ll is nothing but to list all the files and folders inside the sbin. You will see a lot of things. All these are commands, okay, where you can execute. But these commands only can be executed by the root user. Are you getting? Hello? Yes. These commands only will be executed by the root user let's say user add command okay let us try actually i'm a okay administrator yeah, only omc yeah. user and okay i am administrator because while creating the user only i have yeah. checked the box make the user as administrator yesterday i have shown you that but let yeah. us see the user add okay let me add some user called as test one user so you can see uh, Permission denied. You don't have a permission to use the command. Okay. There is another workaround to okay make the OMC user okay as it or uh, to use these commands. But you need to understand slash yes bin contains commands which can be executed by the root user only. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. That's that's it. You need to understand. And the next one is slash bin. If I cd space slash bin, if I type ll, slash bin can, okay, slash bin is nothing but binary, okay, which contains, okay, commands, but these commands can be executed by root user as well as the normal user. Okay. Got it? Yes. These commands can be executed by root user as well as the normal user. You need to understand this. Slash bin contains, I mean, slash bin is nothing but binary, which contains, okay, different commands which can be executed by the normal user and the root user. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. 
can be evident. Okay. For example, WC is command. Okay, WC is nothing but which will count the words. Okay, word count, word count. Okay. If you have any file, it will count the words inside that file. Got it? Yes. You can use WC, okay, simply the file name. So you can see here, oh, the number of lines 50. See, in this is JetCat is a file. It contains 51 lines, 299 words, 1983 characters. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So why I'm showing this command? I'm not actually okay discussing about the WC command. I want to show you how we can execute the commands which are stored in the slash bin. Yes. Before that, we have executed the command which is stored in the SBIN, but we have go we got some error saying that permission denied, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, because slash SBIN, okay, uh, we, okay, the commands which are stored in slash SBIN can only be executed by the root user. Root user. Coming to the, okay, the commands which are stored in the slash bin, okay, we can execute these commands. Yeah. By root user as well as the normal user. Yes, yeah. Got it? Mm -hmm. Got it. Yes. Yeah. Next one is so the next one is. Slash where Bad. so slash where contains okay slash where is nothing but variable variable slash where contains all the log information all the log information what do you mean by log I will show you one log okay but most of the, all the logs will be stored in the slash where only if I go to cd space slash where and if I type LL, there is the option logs. Okay, there is a directory logs. Let me go to the logs directly. CD space log. If I type LL again, so there are a lot of logs which are available, but I am going to show you secure log. Okay, the example of secure log. Mm -hmm. So if I want to read the log, okay, we can use the command tail space hyphen F. And a file name. Okay, the the tail is the command. Okay, which is used for reading the file. Okay, from the bottom. That means from the down. Iphen F is nothing but continuously. I want to monitor the log. If a oh sorry, we cannot use the tail command. Okay, as a normal user. Can you see here? But okay, I have the admin permission for the user. I can use sudo. Tail space, I can your space secure. Now you can. Huh. Now I can use it. Oh, okay. So what is this telling? Sudo user Omshi pass. So tail is for to read the file. Okay. Tail space I can F is nothing but to monitor okay continuously the files, log file. So this is not actually my intention. We will discuss this tail command again, but I'm going to show you what the log files contains. That is what the slash where contains. Okay. I'm going. I'm going to open one more terminal. So you are doing this on Red Hat, but uh, we can do it on the study. Same, that. same, same. Again, I'm telling same.
So right now, how many terminals we have? Two terminals, right? Mm -hmm. Please observe this one. Please observe this one. Okay, after this line. I am trying to log in as a root user. Okay, the command is sq space hyphen space root. From terminal, if you want to log in as a root user, this is the command. If you press enter, it will ask you the password. Okay, intentionally I'm giving wrong password. Okay, and enter. Can you see here? One log has been created here. Can you see that? Um, requirement. Uh, yes. Failed for yes, yes. user root. This is a log message. Are you able to see this? Yeah. So, see, this is one example. Likewise, for every application, okay, it will have logs. All the logs will be stored in. Where? Slash. Slash where? Yeah. Control C to cancel this. Control C to cancel this. All the, okay, logs will store in slash where slash log. So mostly slash, you know, slash where is nothing but variable where it will store all the log files information. Got it? Yes. On the log file can be stored. Okay, the next one is slash dev. Dev stands for device. Dev stands for device. It contains all the device information. For example, we have inserted the hard disk right to see the hard disk information i can use cd space slash dev okay if i type ll there are a lot of okay device files which are available you can see usb but let me show you the hard disk information So actually CD-ROM here, it will show you as SR0. Okay, the name will be SR0. Are you getting? Mm -hmm. SR0. Yes. And there are a lot of uh, things. Let's show you some interesting things here. So fine. Actually, the hard disk names has been NVM E01P1. This is the hard disk name. So you need to understand one more thing. Yesterday we have installed the operating system, right? When mm -hmm. you install the operating system, we have not created any partitions. Operating system itself created the partitions which are required for that. Okay, but that is not a good way. Okay, that is only for the basic uh, installation. In real time, we have to okay create our own partitions. Here it has created three partitions, I think so. The first one is slash boot. I will show okay. I have to explain this. And the next one is slash. You can see slash contains all the operating system files. And the next one is swap. We will discuss about swap and slash root. But you need to understand one thing. This is the NVE0 N1, right? Mm -hmm. Right now, we, I'm in the slash dev. If I type LL, you can see what is the name? Some name, right? NV. Oh, NV. Yeah, this is the name. So you can see here NVME0N1. This is the hard disk name. On this hard disk, we have two. Two partitions, P1 and P2. 
Can you see that? Uh -huh. Yeah. These are the device information, okay, where you will see on the slash dev, all the device information, maybe CD-ROM or DVD writer, all the device information you can see in the slash dev. Is it clear? Yeah. Slash dev. So I have to explain about slash boot also. So slash boot, simply slash boot is the boot of boot. I mean, sorry, wait, I'll explain it. Slash boot contains the bootable files which are required to boot your operating system. Slash boot contains bootable files which are required to boot your operating system. Again, I'm repeating. Slash boot contains the bootable okay, files which are required to boot your operating system. So if I go to slash boot, cd space slash boot. And if I type ll, so you can see we have Okay, uh, some files. These files are required to boot the operating system. Are you getting? These files are required to, okay, boot your operating systems. Slash boot contains the bootable files which are required to boot your operating system. Mm -hmm. So right now, okay, these are all files. Any RAMFS, I will explain you, okay, how this will work and what is the use of these images and all these things. Right now, you need to understand the slash boot contains the bootable files which are required to boot your operating system. That's it. Is it clear? Mm -hmm. Bootable files which yes. require boot to be your operating system. So what is the next one? So the next one will be slash media. So slash media is the default, okay, uh, default mount point for the removable devices. What do you mean by removable devices? If you insert the pen drive in the Linux server, Okay, if you want to see the contents in the pen drive, then definitely you have to go to slash media. Okay, right now we don't have any pen drive or something like that. You need to understand this. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are inserting a pen drive or external hard, hard disk, by default, this removable media will be mounted under the slash media. If you want to see the contents of the removable device, directly you can go to the slash media. You got it? Okay. Is it clear? Yes. Clear about Yes. Clear about that, right? Yes. The next one is slash USR. The next one is slash USR. USR stands for Unix System Reserved. USR stands for Unix System Reserved. Unix System Reserved. Again, repeating Unix System Reserved. Okay. So before explaining about the slash USR, I would show you some example, okay, of Windows. If you go to the C drive, if you go to the C drive, if you go to the C drive, you can find the programs files, right? If you click on program files, you can see I have a lot of, okay, folders, Google folder. Okay, I have not created this. Automatically a folder has been created when I install the Google Chrome, Browser, are you getting? Yes. So this folder contains all the programmable files which are required for that particular application. Is it clear? Yeah. Likewise, if you go back again, if you go to okay Mozilla Firefox, okay, these are the programmable files which are required for the Mozilla Firefox application. So in Linux, in Linux also, whenever you are installing any application. 
there will be some programmable files these programmable files will be stored under slash usr is it clear is it clear yes sir yes yes so slash usr is unix system resort it contains all the programmable files which you install in your operating system okay, okay? mm -hmm. the next one is slash opt opt stands for optional opt stands for optional so if you have any third party applications third party applications so okay it is recommended to install third party applications under slash opt it is recommended to install third party application under slash opt again i'm repeating slash opt is the recommended directory to slash opt is the slash opt is the recommended directory slash opt is the recommended directory to install the third party applications is it clear for example if you want to install nagios nagios monitoring tool nagios is a third party monitoring tool it is recommended to install in slash opt are you getting yeah yes so we need to discuss few more again you need to understand one more thing slash is the top level directory right under the slash you have all these sub directories mm -hmm. okay if you want to see all them cd space slash cd space slash enter type ll you can see bin boot dev etc home you can see all these things opt but we don't want to discuss about all these things it's not at all required i am discussing yeah. about important things okay mm -hmm. the next thing which we need to discuss is slash etc okay etc stands for etc okay so you need to understand this very clearly because this is very important so let's say i want to increase the sound okay see i'm just showing you a small example mm -hmm. i want to decrease the sound what i can do in windows graphically i can click on sound icon i mean the speaker icon and i can decrease the sound right Is that wrong? Yes. But in Linux, actually, you will be using okay uh, CLM mode, command line interface mode, where you cannot see the graphics in real time. No one will use the graphical user mode for the production servers. Always, we will be using command line interface. At that time, if you want to modify any changes or if you want to change any thing in your application. for every okay where for every application there will be configuration files there will there will be configuration files for all the applications the configuration files will be stored under slash etc is it clear yes. for all the applications the configuration files will be stored under etc is it clear okay so if you want to change your application okay i mean if you want to tune your application you just go to etc and open the particular application configuration file and modify or tune your okay parameters okay once you save that depend upon the changes your application will change got it yeah is it clear yeah. yes yes you can do yes sir so here is the etc if you if i go to etc directory if you type ll these are all our configuration files okay are you getting 
Mm-hmm. We'll discuss more about that. So we need to understand about one more directory, which is very important. So that is nothing but slash proc. That is nothing but slash proc proc. Okay. Slash proc is nothing but okay process. Okay, this is also one directory. Before explaining about that, let me right click on the Windows taskbar and click on Task Manager. Task Manager. Okay, in the Task Manager, you can find something very interesting. You can see all the running applications right now. These all are running. Okay. and you can see the cpu utilization the memory utilization and the disk utilization and the network utilization for every application are you able to see there yes so if you want to kill any application let's say i want to kill i mean i want to kill one of the application so okay what i have to do i have to right click okay let me uh, okay remove the i mean let me end the process for the go to meeting I have to right click on the go to meeting click on end task what will happen the go to meeting will close right yes yes or it will end the process okay so in the same way we don't have any graphical things in production environment okay we will we will be using okay cla mode command line interface right so what you will be having in slash proc you know all the running application processes you will be having in the slash proc if you want to stop or okay if you want to stop or if you want to terminate the process you need to collect the process id and you can terminate that using some commands that is again not the scope of this class we'll discuss more about that slash proc in coming class but you need to understand slash proc contains all the processes which are running in your okay server which are running in your server if you want to stop them you can stop them using the process ids is it clear so okay you know actually we need to create some partitions so first partition we will be creating slash partition and the second partition which we are going to create is slash home partition partition slash is one partition second partition i am going to create slash home and the third part the third partition which i am going to create is slash boot okay mm-hmm. and okay if you if you want you can also create you know partition for slash var it is also possible to create that okay what are the different uh, partitions we can create while creating the operating system we are going to discuss right now in our practical yesterday we have completed our practical the practical is nothing but installing the red hat enterprise linux we thought okay creating any partitions we have not created any partitions operating system itself created the partitions but what uh, what we are doing right now is we are going to install the operating system with okay customized partitions this is one more okay type of installation no okay. going to stop this because okay, we can't run multiple servers already my ram utilization the memory utilization is 74 percent that is the mm-hmm. reason i'm stopping this server okay Okay, I can click on home again. Again, I can click on create, create new. new. And here, same process. Click on custom. Okay, click on next, and choose the option. I will install the operating system later because yeah. we are not creating the operating system or we are not installing the operating system right now. After creating the virtual machine, we are going to install the operating system. There is a reason I am selecting the third option. Click on next. and the next one is we are linux. installing linux the version is red hat enterprise linux 8 64 bit if you are using centos then just scroll up you will be finding centos also you can see centos 7 okay mm-hmm. so here we can't find centos 8 right okay you don't want to worry about that so simply you can choose okay other linux kernel 4x 
ओके सिक्स टू फोर बेट ओके इन माय केस इट इज रेड हेड राइट सो आई एम गोइंग विथ रेड हेड एंटरप्राइज प्लान एक्स एट सिक्स टू फोर बेट सेलेक्ट दैट एंड क्लिक ऑन नेक्स्ट एंड द नेक्स्ट वन इज गिव द नेम हियर आई कैन गिव टू डेमो डेमो टू okay all the files which will be created for this particular purpose okay for this particular virtual machine will be created and, and stored here in this path if you want to store that files in different path you can click on browse and you can give a different folder in my case this is fine for me okay i'm just mm -hmm. clicking on next and how many processors i want for this practical one processor is more than enough just click on next and the next one is how much gb of ram you want in my scenario Okay, I'm going with 2 GB because I'm going to install this in CLM mode, command line interface mode. Yes. I'm fine with 2 GB or less than 2 GB also fine because it is a command line interface where it will not take much memory. If it is a graphical environment, definitely you have to go 2 GB. Okay. In my case, I'm going with 2 GB. Click on next, and we already discussed about what this big networking, NAT networking, yes. and all this. let me use bridge network and click on next if you have any issues or if you are not able to understand you have to go to the last class video that means to uh, to yes, class back yes. i think so just go to there and okay repeat the session if you are not yes. able to understand come back tomorrow and ask me okay. okay click on bridge network and click on next here we are going to use lsa logic that is recommended one you don't want to change anything here also you are uh, we are not going to change anything mm -hmm. just click on create new virtual machine and next we are going to give the size 50 gb okay this 50 gb we are getting from the physical windows machine okay it will share the 50 gb from the windows uh, hardware that means uh, the partition here from here only we will get 50 GB and click on next. And this is the which okay virtual machine disk name. Demo 2. dot VMDK is nothing but VMDK is nothing but virtual machine disk. And click on next and finish. Till now we have created only the virtual machine. We have not installed any operating system inside the virtual machine. Or you yes. or you can say that is a server. Okay. In order to I mean in in order to insert the media, you have to click on CD. Yeah. just click on that <coughs> we are going to choose iso image and click on browse so in my case i have that file in downloads i'm choosing red hat enterprise 8.2 and click on open and just click on okay once you done just click on power on the virtual machine so it will start the progress of installation So tell me what is the thing we have to select now? Where is my mouse? My mouse in Windows, right? I have yes. to I have to click on yes. black space. Now how I can choose the first option? Now up the arrow. Now up arrow. Very good. Arrow. And click on enter. Enter. What is the next screen you will be getting? Mm. You again there? Are you there? Yes. Are you getting sleep or what? Um, not really, but <laughs> fine. Boring? No, not boring. I'm good.
What is the next screen we will be getting? User. We are installing by user. If you already install that, then you will see the okay. okay the user screen and all this. So the next screen is okay. Long way selection. I'm fine with US English, and click on next. In the next screen, you will find a lot of icons. Okay, most of them are fine. Only one option we are going to change. We are creating new partitions, our customized partitions ourselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know that, okay, the first thing which I'm going to change is I'm going to click on time and date time and, and date. I'm going to select Indian time. Okay. And uh, click on now, uh, you know, you can click on then. And the next one is Network. software selection, software selection. I'm not going to install the operating system from now. I'm going to choose minimal installation where it will install in the command line interface. You can't see any graphics. Okay. Okay. Only commands. Just select minimal installation and click on done. The next one, installation destination. This is where we are going to keep on changing that. Yesterday we have selected the automatic option. Now we are going to just click on custom. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. And click on done. Here we will find one more screen. Okay. This is a screen. Here we are creating a standard partition. We will discuss what is LVM partitions that. Okay, we are just creating on standard partition and click on plus symbol. Okay. Okay. The first partition which I'm going to create is slash boot. Slash boot contains the bootable files which are required to boot your operating system. Okay. In any uh, in any enrollment, 500 MB is more than enough for that. Okay, 500 MB. Just click on add mount point. You need to understand, okay? What is the file system here? XFS. Okay. Yes. This partition, this partition will be formatted with XFS file system. In Windows also will be having, okay, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, you will be having NTFS file system. Okay. Uh, you have uh, different file systems in Windows also. Likewise, in Linux also, we will be having exe2, exe3, exe4, okay, different file, okay, file systems, but XFS is the latest file system, okay? okay? Okay. And click on plus symbol again, and click on mount points, and click on slash. The slash contains the operating system files where it need more, okay? In my scenario, I'm giving 10 GB, but in real time, you will be getting one ticket saying that, okay, uh, create a partition, slash partition with 100 GB, 150 GB, whatever it is. Yes. My scenario, this is the minimum values. Add mount point. Mount Yogendra, point. are you getting? Yes. Click on the symbol again. You have to give every, I mean, every user name here. No, it's not user. These are partitions. Oh, sorry, partition. Slash home contains the slash home contains the normal user home directory, right? So yeah. this is a partition. Slash home is also we are creating as a partition. Uh -huh. So for this, we don't have any users, normal users. Just this is the minimum size. In real time, you may need to give 500 GB. That is fine. But this yeah. is the minimum thing. Mm -hmm. 5G or 5 GB? 5G also it will say GB only. Okay. Okay. So next we are giving slash where. What is slash where contains? 
variable can you log log information very good it can is the log information okay last one also we are creating as a partition right mm -hmm. yes so only one thing we need to create here swap we need to create right. we have not discussed about swap right yes so mm -hmm. simply i am going to explain about swap for now swap is nothing but it is a virtual memory okay when we, when the swap memory will be used when the swap memory will be used okay whenever the physical memory is okay totally used then it will use the swap memory what do you mean by physical memory how much size i have given when i am creating the virtual machine what is the physical memory i have given the yes, size sir. of the physical memory uh 50 50 that is hard disk size i am asking 20, about memory 20 I'm not asking about hard disk size. Hard disk size I have given 50. What is the RAM size I have given? Memory is nothing but physical memory is nothing but RAM. RAM memory. Okay, 2 GB, right? So yes. let's say you have opened 10 applications. Okay. Uh, now the physical memory okay is totally used. At that time, if you want to open the 11th application, you can't open that, right? You don't have any okay physical memory. So at that time it will use the swap memory okay the 11th application will be open from the swap memory whenever your 10 applications okay one of the applications from the okay 10 applications will close at that time it will create some free space in the physical memory right uh -huh, yeah. at that time it will simply swap the okay file which is opened by the swap memory to the main memory are you getting yep you can are you getting yes sir so what about you, Ashwin? Yes, yes, I am getting it. So, uh, so, so here the swap memory will be less than the original memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. It should be double the original memory. Okay. Okay. We have to give four GB. Okay? okay. So from mm -hmm. where we will get the the double the double of the original memory? From the hard disk only. Okay. Good question. That's it. These are all the partitions we are creating. So I will ask you one question. Why I'm creating different partitions here? Why I'm creating slash partition? Why I'm creating slash home partition? Why I need this many partitions? In Windows, I don't have any okay partitions like this. You can observe that. Only I have only C partition, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if my C drive is crashed, operating system I cannot access, user data yes. I cannot access, all yes. data is done. We cannot access anything, right? Mm -hmm. We lost our entire data if the C drive is crashed. Yeah. In our Linux scenario, this scenario, if my slash directory is corrupted, only that contents of slash directory we cannot access, but slash home directory we can get the data. Remaining directories we can get the data. Got it? Yeah, okay. That is the advantage. Okay. Okay. Now just click on done. And just click on apply changes. Okay. And coming to the network, click on network. Just click on uh, on button, you will get IP address. IP address. And it is taking time. So I'm fine with the host name, but now we can go with this host name and click on done. And click on begin installation. Okay. So you have to install every time you, uh, I mean, create the virtual server. So this, see, yesterday we have discussed one type of thing. What is the thing we have discussed the, about the installing word. the operating system without creating the partition. Yes. Today we have discussed how to create okay operating system, how to install operating system with customized partitions, mm -hmm. right? And also we have discussed about the file system hierarchy before. Okay, before uh, I mean, if I explain this topic yesterday, you can't understand because you need to understand about the file system hierarchy, right? Uh -huh, yeah. That is the reason I have completed this topic now. Okay. What is the thing we have to do here? We need to create the root password. That is that is compulsory. We need to do that. Yes. 
Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm going with Red Hat. In your scenario, you can give a complex password. Click on Done two times. That's it. If you are interested, you can create a normal user. In my case, I'm ignoring the normal user. So it is going to okay, install the operating system, but it, again, it will take at least, you know, uh, maybe 15 minutes at least. OK? OK. So you don't want to see anything. We can't see anything. Just the back end process, it will install, and it will okay show you reboot. Then you can log in. See, yesterday it installed 11, I mean 1100 yeah. uh, some packages, right? Now it is installing 411 packages. Yes, yesterday. Because yesterday's, yesterday's is graphical user enrollment, today's is command line interface, right? Min minimal setup. Yeah, minimal setup. Yuginder, are you having any doubts? No. Fine. Yeah. What about you, Ashwin? Yes, yes, everything is clear. Okay, remaining things tomorrow we'll discuss. Okay. Okay. Have a good day. If you have any doubts, you can WhatsApp me. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay.